Good afternoon. Thanks for coming. In fact, I have to apologize for my late show up here. We were super busy, which is cool, the last three days. So, um, yeah. A little bit about our, about our company. We are not experts in uh, remote sensing. We are aviation guys. Um, we represent Pipistel in Switzerland. And uh, about three years ago, we were approached by Swiss remote sensing company, asked if we could um, modify a Pipistel aircraft for um, remote sensing. What is special? This is the aircraft. Some of you might um, know the Pipistrel aircraft uh, built in Slovenia. So basically what we did, we took an existing Pipistrel Explorer. We modified the structure in this region here, capable to attach a rack maximum 45 kilogram. This is the, the, the weight that we can apply in the belly pot. The whole system is covered by the belly pot for aerodynamic reasons and also protection of the sensors. Uh, as you might know, in aviation, this is, a, this is a certified aeroplane, so we have to certify all modifications that we implement. We started back in 2020, as I said, and uh, we actually expected to be ready 2022. However, certification was, was quite uh, extensive and we... Bah, we had some rounds, and now we, in the end, had one year longer than expected. This is the pot. I don't know if you can see it. It's a little bit low. Basically, in the certification, we had to define already, requested by EASA, which is the European Safety Agency, that we define the sensors that we are going to implement. Today, we have two variants. One is a laser scanner, scanner variant. Uh, existing of a uh, Regal scanner and two phase one cameras. And the other one is an oblique system um, consisting of six cameras, two nadir and six in 45 angle oblique. We have high precision antenna on the, on the tail boom. And we, have, um, we had to increase the, the power for the sensors. So actually, we implemented a, a second alternator that gives us the freedom of um, having um, enough power for the, for the sensors and also the, um, the controllers. In the cockpit, the special thing in our aeroplane is it's a one-man operation, one-man show. You might know other planes like the MP62 from Diamond or bigger planes like a Beechcraft or Caravan from Cessna. All of them are one pilot at least and one operator. So the new thing here is first, it's only single engine, obviously, and the, the pilot himself is also surveying and starting at least the system. The system is automated, so um, the idea that the pilot has the less work with the system possible. On the other hand, the, the aircraft is equipped with um, a Garmin autopilot, so in fact we program the flight in preparation and uh, more or less fly the whole um, legs on autopilot NAV mode. Um, this aircraft resembles a lot to ultralight aeroplane that you might know. In fact, it is not. It's EASA certified, and this gives us also possibility to uh, commercial work, let's say, to do the mapping and really also charge, actually, for the work we are doing. Um, on the back side, the minimum required license for the pilot is a commercial pilot license, CPL. Yeah, these are typical data that we can do. As I said, we have the Regal uh, 480 scanner. Depending on altitude and the speed we are flying, the point density will vary. This is actually, uh, we can fulfill a lot of demand from the customer. Yeah. Why do we use um, a small fixed-wing aeroplane? You might know the, the work drones are doing. Drones are 
perfect tool for mapping, of course. Only when drones, let's say, area or also the distance for a drone gets a little big, and um, the, let's say the, um, the, the work that you have to do to bring the drone there, to operate the drone, and for example, in a railway mapping where you have to dislocate and reactivate the drone, etc., then a fixed wing airplane can be of advantage. So it's really um, the question of, of size. So the bigger the surface gets, maybe too big for a drone, we are in the, in the game. On the other hand, of course, we have, as I mentioned uh, in the very beginning, we have the big planes like a Beechcraft or Caravan, which, um, first of all, the consumption is quite high. So the pollution is quite high. The price, of course, is also high. And typically, those aeroplanes fly rather high altitude with the advantage of, of big SWAT, everything. However, also the sensors will be of a, of a different quality. When you look at the diamond, which is the, let's say, the entry level of the big players, you will be easily at 2.5 up to 3 million of investment. When it comes to our solution, the plane itself, ready to install all the sensors, we are at 400,000. And the sensors, OK, the sensors, whatever you choose, you can also reach 1 million. But if you choose um, sensors that operate in the altitude of 500 to 2,000 feet, maybe, you will, uh, you will reach maybe three to 400,000. On the other hand, we compete against helicopters. Helicopters, great tool especially in our country, in Switzerland, where you have to go into valleys, into mountains, wherever. You can stop with the helicopter. Super tool. However, helicopter is also super expensive. You, you might know the helicopter. Um, typically, if you take a turbine helicopter, the cost in one hour is operating cost easily 1,500 euro. When it comes to our plane, the cost, operating cost is about 50 euro. The consumption is 12 liter of normal petrol gas. Well, we do a um, super plus, 98. And um, the maintenance cost per hour is about 30 euro. It's coming down in Vital. One more. Yeah. Typical application, um, as I said, one variant is the Nadia looking phase one camera, medium form, uh, medium uh, frame format, high quality, operates in poor light condition, you all know this. The applications are mining, urban planning, environmental monitoring, and uh, disaster mapping. Disaster mapping for us is a special application, special use case. In fact, we want to go in this direction. Um, in future, we foresee projects like early fire detection with uh, thermal cameras, and maybe, or we are planning even an artificial intelligence on board um, looking for hotspots, looking for early fire, and in fact, with a data link only put down to ground real time the region of interest. This is our future goal, but yeah, to come. Typical images. What we did during certification phase already, we did the uh, power line mapping. Also here we see advantage for us. The drone again has the, the, the problems that you have to to, to fly in line of sight. You're not allowed today, at least, to fly BV loss. On the other hand, the helicopter, again, the same, same problem. It's a lot of noise, a lot of uh, pollution, and very expensive. We can cover, with our plane, 150 kilometers per hour at the cost, as I mentioned before. You see again, the equipment is uh, typically here. We have the Regal 480, we have the two cameras, and we have the high precision and positioning system. Yes. We also, what we did during the certification phase, we mapped railways. It's very similar case. It's a corridor mapping with the advantages of our plane. All right.
in general, I can say we, the idea from the beginning is to certify a platform, a light aircraft platform, um, open to all kinds of sensors. During certification phase, we understood that uh, from EASA, from the agency, it's not 100% possible. However, what we did, we certify now all the structural thing, the hard points, the rack, and everything. And for different sensors, we are forced to do a minor modification. However, this is uh, under control, and uh, we know how to do it. Our Let's say what we are going to do now is, on one hand, we are providing the service. Whenever you, somebody wants us to map something, we can deploy our airplane wherever, all over the world. Second is we sell the plane naked, if wished, so the customer can actually implement the sensors himself. Or he can order a um, turnkey solution from us. We implement the sensors, we calibrate them, and also test fly them, of course. Another, um, the variant two that we have already is this um, um, oblique system. It consists six cameras, again, of the producer um, phase one. What is a little bit hurting myself is today, the sensor systems are more expensive than the plane itself. We as aviators, we prefer the other way around. So you can expect we are working to find new solutions lighter sensor, cheaper sensors doing the same job, as you are flying actually not that high as other players do. Um, we operate typically at 1,000 feet. If we want to be on higher resolution, higher, uh, higher point density, we fly down to 150 meter, which is actually the lowest altitude legally for an aeroplane. The reason is clear, the drones are allowed to fly up to 120 meters, so we have the 30 meter in between us. Unfortunately, we see this more and more. We have um, floods, we have fires, we have uh, earth, um, uh, how do you call this in English? Rutsch. Erosion. So these are typical um, applications for our system. We had many people here asking us, could you also do, um, I don't know, regular overflight just to have a basis, and whenever something happens, could you even do a, a pique? So fast deployment, yes, we can. The aircraft, even dismantled, we can um, put it together in, in half an hour, put fuel in and, and go. So this is very easy to handle the airplane. Typically, our partners today, Pipistrel is the producer of the basic aeroplane. Phase one, I mentioned cameras, Regal the scanner, Trimble antenna, Planix, and top of flight is our FMS to plan the flight and actually to follow the lines. Yeah, do you see, I was a little bit in a hurry, and this is an old presentation, so the numbers are not really up to date. Factory flight test happened. I can tell you from here we did some extra rounds. Uh, actually, we had three emergency landings, if you want, during uh, development. Uh, two, we had smoke in the cockpit due to too high load, electric load on the system. And we had capacitor that, yeah, get some signal from them. And uh, we had one dark cockpit, again, uh, too high electrical load. So uh, basically all the system, when the, the whole cockpit went black, actually it was me flying this one. The, the bad thing on this is you don't have a radio. You cannot really communicate anymore and you have to find your place. Everything was well, um, but you can imagine each step took a, at least two months then to be investigated by the investigation bureau. And again, you have to apply for permission of flight after the repair of the plane and so on. So that's why we are here one year later than expected initially. We are there today. We, we made it and the aircraft is available. We have already three aircraft produced and uh, ready for delivery in January. And um, these three days, even we were not convinced in the beginning that it's a good thing for us, it was really great. We had a, have a lot of contacts, we see a lot of demand, and we see really a, a good chance for such a solution 
in the low priced but still capable of doing big surfaces in really short time. Thank you very much. That's about XI.